House Bill 3094, clerk will read. House Bill 3094, we have Senate amendments. Uh, the First Amendment is passed over. Well, that's 1A, which brings us to 2A, Bryant and Pope. Pass over. We pass over these. 2A. Pass over. Pass over. 2 is A is passed over as well, right. which read. brings us to 3A, Bryant and Pope. Passed over. Passed over as well, bringing us to 4A, Hill. 4A, Hill. All right, we're on Amendment 4A. It's Mr. Hill's amendment, and he is recognized. Mm-hmm. House will be in order. Let's give Mr. Hill your attention. Mr. Hill is recognized on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, members. And let um, me get your order, Mr. Hill. House will be in order. Let's be in order today, Mr. Hill. All right. Thank you uh, very much to my colleagues for your patience, and thank you, Mr. King, for um, bringing my laptop up here so that I can. Well, I thought I could pull up a file can't. All right, so we're, we're going to look at this bill, and um, I'm going to go from notes on memory, okay? So you're going to get to find out how good my memory is here. All right, so this amendment simply does one basic thing. It strikes the contents of what the Senate did to House Bill 3094, which, as you recall, is the open carry bill with the permission requirements and, and some additional provisions added in. Um, and it, it strikes all of that, and it replaces it with what this body did with House Bill 3096, which, as you recall, back in April, uh, Mr. Cox, Bobby Cox, was, uh, you know, brought this bill, this constitutional carry bill, to the floor. Th House Bill 3096 was amended to add Second Amendment sanctuary legislation to it, and that was passed by this body. And this amendment simply uh, strikes and replaces the contents of 3094 and replaces it with the exact contents of 3096 as passed by this body. Now, why would we do that? I want to explain, simply put, that the Senate does did what they sometimes do, and they screwed this thing up. They screwed it up pretty bad. If you believe that it is important that gun rights be protected, if you believe that we should take incremental steps forward without taking steps backward, um, and would consider that a win for gun rights, this is not that win. This is not that win. So in essence, uh, what the Senate did with the bills, they took what the House passed, it changed in Senate subcommittee, it changed further on the Senate floor. And what, we're, what we have before us here today is a bill that allows cities and counties to restrict, ban the carrying of weapons at public events in public um, in some new ways. It removes the ability, I'm sorry, it broadens rather, the ability of city and county law enforcement to confiscate weapons without it being incident to an arrest, which is, in, that is a blanket prohibition currently in law, it walks that back, it gives them some abilities to do that without it being incident to an arrest. It's tricky to find, but it's in there. And it also um, uh, adds some expanded reporting. So what's going to happen is 
Um, every time uh, there's the least little issue to come up, you know, more data is going to be reported to SLED. SLED's not going to have all the facts of each case. SLED's going to err on the side of caution. It's going to create more headaches for gun owners trying to obtain their CWP. Gun owners who, by the way, have not been adjudicated as being guilty of a crime, who in the eyes of the law and in the state are not criminals. Now, this is um, obviously going to create a lot of business. If we pass this, it's going to create a lot of business for those few attorneys that specialize in helping people get their gun rights back. It's going to create a lot of business for them, but it's going to create a lot of hassle for our constituents and for the law-abiding citizens of our state. Um, so to say that, you know, we're going to just take the incremental win of allowing open carry if you have the state's permission by virtue of having a concealed weapons permit, I'll agree with you. That is a small step forward. Still leaves the issue on the table, the very big issue, which I have been fighting from day one since I joined you guys down here, that law-abiding gun owners pursuant to the Second Amendment should not have to ask the state for permission to exercise their gun rights. And we, as legislators, have no rights to infringe on their right to do so pursuant to the Second Amendment. That would remain if we pass this as is. However, regardless of the fact that you're taking one incremental small step forward in, in terms of allowing open carry of concealable weapons, you're taking two steps backwards, as I've just described. So you're taking a step backwards by having cities and counties to begin to regulate uh, the open carry of weapons and broadening their abilities to potentially confiscate weapons without it being incident to an arrest. And you're also broadening reporting and data sharing, which ultimately SLED is going to share back with the federal government. And it will be used by the federal government to enforce gun regulations which are more stringent than what this state has seen fit to enact. So if you are pro-gun and if you are Republican, I would caution you that the reporting amendment that was added by Senator Hutto across the hall is not a win for gun owners. It is actually a step back and it's an ironic step because while on the one hand we're claiming that we're going to, in the bill, refuse to um, implement, we're going to refuse to implement any new federal gun laws that violate the Constitution, we're at the same time giving the federal government the data that they would need and desire to come and do, do so themselves. By the way, in the Second Amendment sanctuary portion of this bill, as passed by the Senate, there are no teeth. There are no criminal penalties on any state or local official that would carry out an unconstitutional federal law or order. So basically, if you break this law, nothing's going to happen to you. It's essentially a paper tiger. It's essentially just a nice bullet point on somebody's campaign flyer for the 2022 election when in reality we have not even moved the needle. In fact, if we've taken one step forward, we've also taken two steps backward in this bill. Now, what happens if we pass this amendment? What happens is the House repeats what we did just a month ago and pass the language of 3096. That's what happens. And in addition to that, what happens procedurally? Well, it would go back across the hall today. The Senate would have the choice whether to accede to our demands, pass the bill. They can discuss it. They can vote on it. Or they can send it to conference committee. Those are the two choices that are before them. If it goes to conference committee, then President Peeler will choose three senators. Speaker Lucas will, th will choose three representatives. And 
through the month of the rest of this month and through the month of June, as the speaker has indicated, under the terms of the signing die resolution, which we've already passed, that conference committee would be allowed and encouraged to meet during that time. And then at some point, whether it's on June 8th when we're back to deal with H2 or whether it's June 30th when we come back to deal with budget vetoes, or if it's subsequent to that in September or later to deal with redistricting, at any point we could take up the committee report and vote on it. At which time, if we're not taking steps backwards, I pledge my support for whatever that committee conference committee comes up with. I'm merely asking you to repeat the vote that you took in April to simply repeat that vote. Let's keep this issue in play. Let's not jeopardize the rights of our citizens. Let's not create legal ambiguities about what brandishment is, which this bill has failed to address. That's one of the reasons cities and counties implicitly under the language of the Senate version of 3094, that is one of the reasons why they potentially have more ability to confiscate weapons without arrest, because there's a section that we're striking out in there that deals with brandishment, public brandishment and the, and the, and the local government's response to that. And there are probably other legal issues which we have not fully delved into in terms of addressing the brandishment potential criminal issue there. And so I ask you, let's pass a bill that we know is a good bill. Let's pass Rep my colleague, Representative Bobby Cox's bill. He's worked very hard on it. Several others, Representative Madison, uh, worked very hard on the um, Second Amendment sanctuary piece, which is included in 3096, and it is included in this amendment. You're welcome to verify that, get a copy from the desk, or come up here and look at my copy. Mr. Hill, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but your first 10 minutes has expired. Mr. Kasky is recognized on the amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if, if I were elected emperor, this would be the law of the land. Uh, unfortunately, uh, regrettably, and maybe uh, graciously and, and fortuitously for some, I am not. I am simply a House member here, like all of you, and as such, I have to recognize the realities of a legislative process that is oftentimes frustrating and requires us to take steps that may not be all of what we want. I co-sponsored 3096. I led it through subcommittee and full committee and presented it all to you, and we got it across the hall, and that's where it sits today. 3096 could be the reality uh, of South Carolina's law on the concealed carry, where you don't need the permission slip. Um, but our friends across the hall in this bicameral si uh, system uh, didn't see fit to go that route, or at least haven't yet. Uh, last week, during their debate on this bill, uh, an amendment was put forward to ask those senators on the record whether or not they would support that. They definitively, resoundingly, and permanently answered that, no, it's a recorded vote. So for those who are proponents of 3096, I say call your senator. Call your senator, bring it back over here. However, in the meantime, what we have now, for those of us who want to advance the cause of the Second Amendment, is success. Don't snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Take what we have, what we've got from the Senate, don't gamble with something that you know will lose so that you can go and have a great Facebook post. I get it, I'm with you, I'm a crazy gun person, but in the reality of a legislative system that has two chambers, and not just one person, this is the best bill that we can get, we should take the win, it's the furthest advance of the Second Amendment in decades, and we should rejoice and celebrate that. I recognize that not everyone in this chamber shares my view on the Second Amendment, but for those who do, we have success. I would urge you to take that success and let's fight hard uh, for constitutional carry in the future. Uh, I would ask for your support uh, in a second when I move to table this amendment. Mr. Okay. Mr. Hill. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. White is recognized. That's what I thought we were. Mr. White, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't very often get up here and speak against um, adopting something for the Second Amendment, but I am today. 
I'll tell you why. <clears throat> Mr. Hill, once again, is trying to do a poison pill. He did this deja vu all over again a session ago. Language is in this bill to allow whenever a church is at a school to be able to have that church allow guns on the church campus. It's in the lease program. It's in this part. The amendment got put on that bill last day of session, went back to the Senate that he's asking you to do, where it died. Mr. McCaskey is exactly right. Bird in a hand. That's what we have here. My wildest dreams, I didn't think this bill would actually come back. To all my friends in here, I was here when the Senate convened the day after the Charleston incident that took a good colleague out of this hall, a fine man, Senator Pinckney I worked with as well. They sent us something that not only allows you to carry a weapon openly if you have training, which I am a CWP holder. I voted for his version on a clean bill that's over there. I voted against this amendment when it was on this bill the first time when we sent it over, and I plan on doing the same thing again because it now has things in it that make it better. Yeah, you may take one step forward and two back. We have the ability as lawmakers to come in and continue the fight. The fight's not over. I've got a bill in judiciary that I'd prefer to be the language that's on this one for sanctuaries. It's really not a sanctuary. It protects manufacturers and the gun owner. This bill goes beyond your ability to carry a weapon openly or not. It allows you the protections from the federal government from being able to come and take your gun, whether you want to carry it or not. Law-abiding citizen, you may have something they deem that's illegal that you legally purchase, you legally own. It's yours. That's your property. You should be able to own that as long as you're a law-abiding citizen. This gives us those protections. That's why we need to look at this bill and say, let's send it to the governor. Let's don't send it to the Senate to potentially get stuck in a box where they can't get unanimous consent to go to it to pull it out, and it's dead. In a couple of days, this could be law, and I think that's important. It's not just about carry. This is about protecting law-abiding citizens that are gun owners in the state of South Carolina. We don't have this opportunity often, folks. Two days left in session. Who says the Senate conferees will even want to meet if you get it to a conference report if they get it out? They don't have to meet. Can't force them, can you, Mr. Simrel? It may be one of those situations that it just sits there and you get absolutely positively nothing. And something may come down from the federal government. If we pass a bill yesterday, I mean, DC's in chaos, but South Carolina's not. This world is chaotic, but South Carolina's not. We didn't have the rioting. We didn't have anything going on. We all came together around uh, the death of a colleague. That's who we are. Now let's do what we need to do to protect the gun owners, to allow people to carry, allow people not have to pay for the permission that I think we all got emails about. Ammo was hard to get, so they lowered the qualifications to 25 rounds. I don't know if any of you tried to buy any lately. It's not just your pistol. It's your shotgun. For all of us that love to hunt birds or rabbits or whatever we do, it's hard to find that ammunition. This is Mr. Kirby. We've been in a duck blind once or twice. It's hard to find that ammo. So ladies and gentlemen, we have an opportunity to do something for the citizens of this state. Let's don't fall for the trap of let's force the Senate to do something. The Senate gave you something. Let's take it. Thank you, Mr. White. Mr. Hill, on his second 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And with all, all due respect to uh, the opinions and arguments of my two prior colleagues um, who are entitled to their opinions, I will say and remind this body 
that first of all, this is not this is not a win as is. So to go out and say that it is is, is just flat out not being honest. Uh, as I've explained, and I'll explain again momentarily, this and with more specific uh, direction here. I will just want you to understand this is this is a step forward, two steps backward and failing to address the key issue, which is the issue of permission. Now, all I'm asking you to do is to send this bill to committee. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody here would argue that the result of passing this amendment would be to send the bill to, to conference committee. That's a good thing. You know, worst case scenario, the conference committee comes back and says, we're gonna pass 3094 as it stands today and recommend that we pass that. And then we're back here in June with a, with a vote up or down on that and, and it's end of discussion. Now, the problem there is the question before us, why wouldn't we give every chance to persuade the Senate to pass constitutional carry? This body, once again, the, the majority of this body passed constitutional carry already. It passed 3096. In 2017, it passed a form of permitless carry. Now, my question to you is, did you mean that vote? Did you, both of those votes, those of you who are here that were f here for both, did you mean that? Do you actually want constitutional carry to pass? If you do, why wouldn't you fight for it? We fought for many other things here. We fought for the gas tax, to raise the gas tax. You've never seen harder ball played with the Senate than over the gas tax in 2016, 2017. You've never seen harder political ball played than was played over the gas tax between the House and the Senate. I'll give you another example. How about the Santee Cooper issue, which is still unresolved? Do you see members of both chambers playing hardball on that issue? Absolutely. Nobody here would doubt or argue with that. So my question to you is, you voted for 3096. If you didn't want it to pass, why did you vote for it? If you do want it to pass, why won't you fight for it? Amending the bill to replace it with 3096 would put two versions of 3094 in front of the members of the conference committee. The six member committee made up of three senators and three house members. I think it'd be fairly easy for us to predict who those members would be on both sides as well. So it's not like you know, leadership's not going to have their say in that process, but the choice that would be before them, before those members, would be on the one side, the House version would be the version of 3096, the language you have before you right now. And on the other side, you would have what the Senate passed out, which is the bill as it stands today. The conference committee would get to decide between those two versions. They can pick one section from one, pick another section from another, or they can come back and rewrite the bill completely and ask for free conference powers. Either way, we'd get one more vote and then it'd go to the governor. The bill's not gonna die, folks. And it's not like, you know, we're at the end of a two-year session or at the two end of a, you know, we're not at the end of a two-year session like we were in September of, of 2020, for one thing. You know, whatever doesn't make it across the finish line this year gets carried over to next year. So we've got all summer to try to come to an agreement, try to come to a resolution if it takes that. Hopefully it wouldn't take that, but if it did, the bill's not dead. We get to address it as quickly or as slow as we want to next year. Another thing I want to just point out just to set the record straight, when my state senator, Senator Cash, also from a fellow delegation member from Anderson County, uh, brought up a, a church carry bill, passed it promptly out of the state Senate, sent it over here in 2019. And what happened? And don't tell me that, you know, the COVID shutdown killed it because it was over here from January to March in 2020 before we ever did anything. So, you know, we, there was ample time for either the Judiciary Committee to pass it out, give it a hearing, pass it out, or for some member to withdraw the bill onto the House floor. That did not happen until September of 2020 when my colleague, Representative Cox, 
managed to convince everyone here to allow unanimous consent to do that. Now, I've had lots of time to analyze and reanalyze my actions and decisions. Trust me, I have. I've had many conversations. I've had much introspection about what went down, what I could have done differently. Trust me, it weighed heavily on me. Trust me, I want to learn. I want to do the best job that I can, and I want to work with you guys as much as possible. And in fact, I wasn't even expecting to discuss my amendment here today at all. Amendment 1A is by Representative Cox, and it's the exact same text, and he wanted me to go first, so here we are. So if you don't like my amendment because it has my name on it, you'll have another chance to vote on it again with his name on it. This isn't about pride of ownership. This isn't about who gets credit. This is about what I came down here and swore my oath to do. We all raised our right hand and we said, we swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States and of this state, so help us God. That certainly includes the Second Amendment. We are infringing on the Second Amendment every day. We come down here and we pass gun legislation that does not restore to the people their right to carry without having to ask the state for permission first. So my question to you here today is, did you mean your vote on 3096? Are you willing to fight for it as you have for other issues? There are at least 80,000 people all over South Carolina that are demanding, have signed petitions and are actively contacting all of us and demanding that we restore their gun rights and we stop infringing on their gun rights. We have more first-time gun owners than ever before. People are concerned. And it's not, it's not a stereotypical southern redneck gun owner either. We're talking about people from all walks of life are feeling the need to arm themselves for their own self-protection. We live in tumultuous times. God forbid that any tragedy should happen to anyone here. I can tell you that tragedy has touched my family. Tragedy has probably touched yours. Tragedy has touched my community as it has touched yours. The answer to tragedy is not to punish law-abiding citizens by making them jump through more hoops and obtain the state's permission and in, in a waiting period that may or may not be completed within 90 days while SLED processes the permit. Folks, the bottom line is the Second Amendment couldn't be more strongly worded. It says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That is not merely a requirement on Congress. That is also a requirement on all government. And it was worded that way so strongly because our founding fathers believed that the right of the people to defend themselves is closely connected to the right of life, which is the most sacred right. And it comes from God and precedes government. No government official on the face of the earth has the right or the ability, legal ability, to deprive someone of life or of the ability to defend themselves if they are innocent. And yet that's what this bill will do. So please don't, you know, be swayed and, and think, you know, the problematic sections in this bill are Section 8 in particular and Section 10. Section 10 is the reporting issue. Um, this, this needs to be struck. It's quite ironic that it comes right after Section 9, which is the Second Amendment sanctuary language that was added, um, which, by the way, I believe the Second Amendment sanctuary language that my colleague, Representative Magnuson, added to 3096 was stronger. And so if you, if you like that aspect of 3094, you, that's another reason you need to pass this amendment, because that is better. It actually has, I believe it has teeth. I believe it will be enforceable. And so, my friends, let's do the right thing. Let's do right by our constituents. Let's be honest. Let's be consistent. And let's pass this amendment. Let's send the bill to conference. Let's keep, and, and let's, um, let's see where it goes. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Ms. Caston, recognized on Amendment 4A. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'll begin by echoing the comments of uh, Representative McWhite. Uh, I think he offered a good number of, uh, of points that are worth considering. 
Uh, you know, I'm reminded of a, a scene in a favorite movie of mine, A Few Good Men, uh, in which one of the characters, when they're in court, uh, objects and the judge overrules it, and then she pops up. I strenuously object, which is, of course, the great source of ridicule later, because once you've been defeated, to walk back into that defeat uh, immediately is, is nonsensical. Um, and, and listen, I can understand um, why it may be confusing to some about the legislative process, particularly if you've never successfully passed legislation. But for those of us who have, who internalize how difficult it can be here, uh, we have an opportunity to meaningfully, for the first time in decades, advance the Second Amendment. Um, and I would encourage you not to take uh, legislative counsel from uh, the individual who single-handedly stopped us from being able to have a church carry bill. So don't rely on the misrepresentations here, particularly when the argumentation revolves around an idea that 3094 is bad, but I'll vote for it if I get to later. That is dishonest. That is the sort of dishonesty that has kept us from bringing the Second Amendment forward for decades. I urge you to vote with me on this motion to table. Pending question is the adoption of Amendment 4A. Mr. Hill requests a roll call to nine members second. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Mr. Caskey moved to table Amendment 4A. I apologize, Mr. Hill. Mr. Hill, you mean you, re you request a roll call vote. Do nine members second his request? All right, nine do. Roll call is required in order. Pending question, tabling Amendment 4A. Emma Dean. Mr. Simmel. Time's expired. Polls are closed. Clerk will tabulate. Vote of 6748. Amendment 4A is tabled. Clerk will read.